Oh, this is Daft Man here again. I uh, just want to do a little bit of an update on this for you. Got two batteries connected this time, and a capacitor. That's the drive battery. It's my spare battery. Now, just to show you, it's not running at the moment. That one is charging this battery. There we go. Look, follow the leads. They actually charge that battery, and that's actually going to the two coils. generation coils and that one there you can see that charges that battery which comes from one of the cables they actually go into the back of that one for the charge rate so we're actually charging two batteries off of two coils at the same time and we're actually collecting the back MF to this capacitor as well so um, Let's start her up. You can see she starts just by chucking the power on. Just so I can show you underneath now. That's what we've got underneath. I'll just stop that again for you. I won't I can't do it while my hands are up, so I'll stop it again. Alright, so I've just stopped it. And that's what we've got underneath, uh, which is just three magnets on brass that spin and activate the. So, just to show you, there's no trickery underneath there at all. And here we go under my bench, because I know that's how some people do these cons. Uh, actually, we can't see. I'll give you another test that in a few minutes, just so you can see that. There we go. So, we'll start it back up again. Uh, to start it back up, all I'm going to do is just plug it in the amperage meter and off she goes. So I don't have to flick it because the timing is pretty accurate, so, which is very important. Then she goes up to speed. Now, as you can see, we are dragging, that's the current rating, current at the moment we're dragging. Not surprising with the amount of uh, stuff we've got connected to it. So a little over half amp, nearly 600 milliamps. That's the drive voltage. Um, we'll now have a look at this battery voltage. Sorry about that. The talk is worse. We can see she's kicking out 13. She will climb. The battery's not actually flat, so that's a bit of an unfair test. And across to the other battery, back to the meter, and we can see that's 13.5. It, it will go up in a few minutes. Now, we're also collecting the back EMF, uh, which I don't actually like doing because it always affects the current drainage. Um, so I think that's a bit of a con. Uh, but we can actually see we've got 13. Well, not 13 volts, it does go up to about 13.8 volts unless it shorts out like that. And that's the thing that I don't like. That proves to me that that is directly connected to the battery. And I don't know how it's diode, it's as the Bedini circuit says. Circuits is what I work with all day, so I know it's right. But we've got it driving this present tube. Not much. Um, it drags 350 milliamps uh, when it's connected to the battery. So that's actually coming straight directly. I can just show you that. Oh, I can't. There we go. It's coming straight directly off the capacitor. I do have to keep my eye on the voltage in case it creeps up. But it usually stays in the 12 volts when it's running this off the back EMF. Uh, and the strange thing is. It's very close, allowing for meter inaccuracies to the battery. But it uses 350 milliamps to run this tube, and as you can see, uh, the motor itself uses about 320 milliamps, round about, as you can see from the last videos. So it's, it is actually uh, aiding the running of this lamp. As for this clench thing, uh, you still can't see, but there's nothing under the bench. As you can see, there's no else having any effects on anything under my bench. 
There we go. Right, just lift it on its side so you can see. Uh, well, the new tune arrow, but you've seen that. Right, as you can see, that voltage is actually dropping very slightly. Yeah, it's, it's all over the place if you like then. Now we're going to go to the first battery again and see what's happening with the voltage, if anything. That's gone to 13.12, it may have been like 13.13. .13. This was the lowest one over here. Sorry about my camera work. That's now gone to 13.2. 13.1 then. And we're still dry, uh, dragging quite a, a large amount of current. Unfortunately, the way I've wired it up, we can't really switch the, the back EMF off. Right, here's your figure for the back EMF. We'll put it on a maximum so it'll actually measure the range as it's going up and it'll log the maximum that it uses. So that's what that does, it just logs the max current I'm using. Right, now we're going to take off the back EMF. And this is why I don't use back EMF, I think it's a con. That's my personal opinion of it. That's the back EMF off. You can see the bulb's gone out. Now we'll take the max off and let it read and you can see that it's actually dropped considerably in current drainage. I'll put the back EMF back on, shouldn't really do this one from uh, like this. There we go. And as you can see it jumped up to nearly an amp. It settles out. Let's put it on, on again. Maximum. Settles out. Settled out at 11. At 611 milliamps. So over half an amp is dragging. Light is now back on just to prove the light is now working. It does get a lot brighter when it's been on for a while, but that's the one I've been hanging outside the shed at night. And it does run it quite comfortably, but not using the back EMF. Uh, it goes through a different circuitry for that. There you go. What's it running now? Bearing in mind that that does act that with a little light there, that's too light, it does draw 350 milliamps when connected directly to the battery, and it's, it's bang on 350 milliamps. That's the run battery voltage. I'm now going to take off the back EMF, let it run up on its own speed. As you see now, I put the back EMF off, um, off the capacitor. It's now dropped down 